Thank you. That's the first story. I got a few more throughout the night. Let's get your first comedian up here, though. Please welcome, she's been doing it for a few years. Please welcome Sadia Akhtar. soak in being introduced with my name being pronounced correctly. It's a really sweet, sweet feeling. Uh, it doesn't come too often. Uh, a lot of times I get uh, Sadia, Sadja, Sadia. Uh, I try to make a little uh, trick to help people remember it or pronounce it correctly and I'd be like, um, it's, a, it's like Nadia, but with an S, you know? And it had to happen at some point, inevitably. Some guy's just like, oh, hey, Snadia. <laughs> like, Snadia? Like, come on. You know that's not even a real name. Snadia. It gets me angry just like thinking about it right now. But um, before I get into it, I just wanted to make an announcement. Um, my parents are in the audience. I repeat, my parents are in the audience. Give a little wave, uh, there's a girl. Uh, there's my mom. Did you have a good Mother's Day, I mean? Did you like all your presents? And flowers and all those cards. That's good, I'm glad you enjoyed it um, because I am going to be making fun of you for the rest of the night. I did warn you. I like how she quickly went from aw. You huh? <laughs> she acts like she doesn't like it, but she says things like, you know, people really think it's funny when you talk about me. You know, it's like, I'm the funny one. It's like, I should be the one doing it, not you so much. Yeah, don't feel bad for her. She's put me through a lot. <laughs> no, seriously, like recently, just recently, uh, me and my mother, just me and my mother uh, took a trip to the homeland of Pakistan. Just me and my mother together, alone, uh, for nearly 24 hours of straight travel. Um, it was cool. Yeah. No, it's tough because we've um, we've gone to Pakistan like it's not a big deal. We've gone since we were kids like every other summer, like we were there. Uh, but see, then I had the buffer of my siblings to the sides of me and my, my father leading us like a general through the airport. <laughs> he took it so seriously. Like how seriously? The man would be in a full suit and tie. Every single trip, suit, tie. And I mean, we're from New Jersey. Um, there you're lucky if people find the need to change out of their sweatpants into their velour jumpsuit for an airport run. But you know, there's my dad, extra starch shirt, shiny shoes, ready to go. And if we ever asked him, like, why? Like, um, why the whole suit get up like you're not going to work today? Um, we'd always get like some sort of the same response of, uh, I don't know, I don't want these jokers giving me any trouble at the airport. What now? Joke, like jokers? Everybody's a joker. That was a response to everything too. We'd be like, why, uh, why, why do we have to go so early? Like, um, the airline says we should be there like three hours before the flight. What? No, 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 no. Those jokers aren't gonna tell you the right time. We need to be there five, six, six hours ahead of time. Let's go. Oh my God, there's only 10 hours. Let's go, let's go. He was on a mission. He was not gonna be, uh, stop any of these jokers at the airport. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never even seen like a TSA agent like crack a smile, let alone a joke. I don't know where this irrational fear of his comes from. But I mean, he led us through there. And uh, this trip, he could not come with us. So it was just me and my mother. Just us two. I cannot emphasize this enough. And I don't know if it was from the years of traveling under my father's tyranny, but um, she was just really afraid to travel alone. I mean, this was a woman who at my age went through to Pakistan, to America, to Ethiopia, with three children under five, without breaking a sweat, like, no biggie. 
Now she was like, what? I have to hold my bags? Do I, do I give my passport to somebody? Are they going to give it back? I, I don't know. And she's usually fiercely independent, so this is pretty shocking for me, but, but what, what does a Desi mother, who does she turn to when there's no one left to turn to? The child she can manipulate the easiest, the eldest daughter, AKA me. For centuries, daughters of, uh, eldest daughters of Desi moms, uh, it's like a kryptonite. They cannot say no to their mother's wish. Um, plus, I was unemployed at the time, and a free trip to Pakistan was A-OK -okay in my book. Uh, we used to go every other summer, like I said, and now we hadn't been back in like six, seven years, so uh, I was pumped. I wasn't gonna let anything stand in my way, not even a trip alone with my mother. Uh, but we, uh, we go, and I'm on high alert, as much as I can be, with my dad. Um, and she, uh, right after we booked the ticket, though, she starts in with that little uh, manipulation. You know, she, uh, she says, you know, Sadie, I was just thinking, if, if I wasn't paying for you, I, uh, I, I probably would have bought, like, a, a first-class ticket for myself. <laughs> I'm like, who are we BSing here? <laughs> you would never even a thought about buying a first class. Okay, shut up, okay, you know, uh, business class. I would have bought a business class ticket to Pakistan, okay? So somehow from there, it became my sole purpose to create a business class feel of a trip in coach for my mother. It was a sacrifice. I was um, like her travel concierge, uh, but really I was her travel monkey. Uh, I was there to pick up all the bags, stand in line up to the last second, then she could just jump in and stand in with me. Uh, I was there to talk to people, yell at people, fight for the baggage carousel, get our bags in that overhead compartment. And um, she didn't outright ever call me her travel monkey, but um, there was a point in the flight where she just looked at me and said, I'm bored. <laughs> Dance for me. <laughs> Do it. I did not. But, um, yeah, so traveling on the plane, uh, there's usually like three seaters. And now there was just two of us. And as much as I tried to be a good travel monkey, I could not arrange it so that we had a free seat. And so this poor man who did nothing wrong on this world except book a ticket <laughs> is like coming down the aisle towards us. And he doesn't even know how much my mother hates him right now. <laughs> oh my God, we have to sit next to this man. This man is going to sit next to us. I have to sit next to this man. He's going to be sitting there next to us. <laughs> and so being a good travel monkey, I like, you know, I'll switch seats, we'll switch seats. Give a buffer. Yeah, but he's just going to be sitting there with us. This man. Call the flight attendant. I dutifully call the flight attendant. The man's already sitting here, then it's me, then it's my mother. Now my mother has a, a face she gives, we call it the face. It's, a, it's like a delusionally charming face almost. I say almost because it works like 99% of the time, she gets what she wants. So she's putting on the face. <laughs> Hi, um, sorry, out of the, sorry. hi, my daughter and I are traveling and, um, you know, this man, this man. Are there any other seats? And you know, this flight attendant could not care less and she's like, I'm sorry, the flight's full, we'll do what we can. Nothing's happening. She's miserable. Bad travel monkey, bad travel monkey. So then at some point in the middle of the flight, the guy gets up to use the bathroom or walk around. And my mom, I'm thinking, is asleep this whole time. But no, she has been hiding and waiting and holding it. And she springs to life. Sorry, the man's gone. Sorry, get up out of my way. I have to go to the bathroom while the man is gone. The man will be back any second. Sorry, get up, get up. She's throwing things and spilling water on me. 
I'm like completely out of it. Headphones are snapping off her head and into my face. Get out of the way, the man is coming. <laughs> and so she goes and she comes back and she is just fresh as a daisy, happy as a clam. And I'm a disheveled, tired travel monkey. Like Sadia, you really fix yourself up before we land. Come on. And uh, so she was so afraid of this man. But uh, the rest of our trip was pretty uneventful until we came for the hardest part, which was leaving Pakistan to come home. And that airport is just like Lahore International Airport. Love it to death. But that is just a chaotic mess of lines and cutters and people just couldn't give two craps about what you need and when you need it. The most disinterested people I've ever seen in my life. Mm, fine, go, hello, bye, teak, fine. But I am pushing up as a good travel monkey our way through this line. We are almost home free. We are in this line just to get our visa stamped and then we can go. I'm holding all the bags. And then this man who comes by in not a uniform, just kind of some slacks, a white shirt, holding a vaguely authoritative clipboard, mumbles something like, hey, uh, are you Mrs. I'm like, get out of here, Joker. I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> My mom. What? Am I? I don't know. Sadie, the man is saying we should go with him. Sally, the man's going, I'm gonna go. I don't wanna lose our spot in line. I'd give everyone the stink eye for cutting me and now I have to like go chase after her. And he's taking her to some other room in the airport. I'm like, what is she doing? And I finally catch up with her. He's got like no real list. There's no real name on there. The name he gives is like completely off ours. And uh, she, she, I'm sorry, Sadia. He, he was a man, he asked me to come. When a, when a strange man with a clipboard approaches you, you go with him. I'm like, how did man go from, oh my God, this man. Like the man, he said, come, and I came. And I was so angry. I was like, he wasn't in a uniform, nothing. Or in the back of the line. Like he wasn't even in a freaking suit. And that's when my mom was like, I miss your father. I wish he was here. Bad driver monkey, bad. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Some of the round of applause for Sadia.